This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. That's L I B R I V O X dot org. Read and recorded by Ted Hanley. Seattle, Washington, February 2006. The Little Match Girl also known as The Little Match Seller, by Hans Christian Andersen, 1846. It was the last evening of the year. In the cold and darkness, a poor little girl, with bare head and feet, was wandering about the streets. Her feet were quite red and blue with the cold. In her tattered apron she carried a bundle of matches, and there were a good many more in her hand. No one had bought any of them the livelong day. No one had given her a single penny. Trembling with cold and hunger, she crept on, the picture of sorrow. The snowflakes settled on her long, fair hair, which fell in ringlets over her shoulders, but she thought neither of her own beauty nor of the cold. Lights shone from every window, and the smell of roast goose reached her, for it was New Year's Eve, and it was of that she thought. In a corner formed by two houses, one of which came a little farther forward than the other, she sat down, drawing her feet close under her, but in vain she could not warm them. She dared not go home. She had sold no matches, earned not a single penny, and her father would certainly beat her. Besides, her home was almost as cold as the street. It was an attic, and although the larger of many holes in the roof were stopped up with straw and rags, the cold wind came whistling through. Her hands were nearly frozen. A match would warm them, perhaps, if she dared to light it. She drew one out and struck it against the wall. It was a bright, warm light, like a little candle, and she held her hands over it. It was quite a wonderful light. It seemed to that poor little girl as though she were sitting before a large iron stove with polished brass feet and brass ornaments. So beautifully did the fire within burn that the child stretched out her feet to warm them also. Alas, in the instant the flame had died away, and the stove vanished, and the little girl sat cold and comfortless with the remains of the burnt match in her hand. A second match was struck. It kindled and blazed, and wherever its light fell, the wall became transparent as a veil, and the little girl could see into the room. She saw a table spread with a snowy white tablecloth, and set with shining china dinner dishes. A roast goose, stuffed with apples and dried plums, stood at one end, smoking hot, and pleasantest of all to see, the goose with knife and fork still in her breast, jumped down from the dish and waddled along the floor right up to the poor child. The match was burnt out, and only the thick, hard wall was beside her. She lighted a third match. Again the flame shot up, and now she was sitting under a most beautiful Christmas tree, far larger and far more prettily decked out than the last one she had seen last Christmas Eve through the glass doors of the rich merchant's house. Thousands of wax tapers lighted up the branches, and tiny painted figures, such as she had seen in the shop windows, looked down from the tree upon her. The child stretched out her hands toward them, and the match went out. Still, however, the Christmas candles burned higher and higher, till they looked to her like the stars in the sky. One of them fell, the light streaming behind it like a long, fiery tail. "'Now someone is dying,' said the little girl softly, for she had been told by her old grandmother, the only person who had been kind to her, but she was now dead, that whenever a star falls, a soul flies up to God. She struck another match against the wall, and the light shone around her, and in its brightness 
she saw her dear dead grandmother, gentle and loving as always, but bright and happy as she had never looked during her lifetime. Grandmother, said the child, oh, take me with you. I know you will leave me as soon as the match goes out. You'll vanish like the warm stove, like the New Year's feast, and like the beautiful Christmas tree. And she hastily lighted all the remaining matches in the bundle, lest her grandmother should disappear. And the matches burned with such a splendor that noonday could scarcely have been brighter. Never had the good old grandmother looked so tall and stately, so beautiful and kind. She took the little girl into her arms, and they both flew away together, radiant with happiness. They flew far above the earth, higher and higher, till they were in that place where neither cold, nor hunger, nor pain is ever known in the presence of God. But in the cold morning air, crouching in the corner of the wall, the poor little girl was found, her cheeks glowing, her lips smiling, frozen to death on the last night of the old year. The New Year's sun shone on the lifeless child. Motionless, she sat there, with the matches in her lap, one bundle of them quite burnt out. She'd been trying to warm herself, the poor thing, some people said, but no one knew of the sweet visions she had beheld, or how gloriously she and her grandmother were celebrating their New Year's festival. End of The Little Match Girl by Hans Christian Andersen